Let's take a look at building 3D objects in Photoshop. Like video, 3D is simply another layer. And we're going to start with a flat background image. I'm going to right click and choose Duplicate Layer, and we'll be building a sphere. Now I have a copy of this DC image directly over top of the background layer. Under the 3D menu, I can choose New Mesh from Layer, and in Mesh Presets, Photoshop has quite a few to choose from, built-in shapes that they automatically create for you from the image you're looking at. Now, even though there are a few presets that we're looking at here, Photoshop doesn't necessarily do the polygons, the underlying structure of a 3D model. That's done in a 3D authoring program like 3D Studio Max, for example. So if you wanted to draw a chair or a table, you really do that in a 3D program, and you could bring it in with 3D New Layer from File. But what I'm going to do is switch to the 3D Workspace because they've dramatically improved usability. And if I'm on the 3D Workspace, the choices I saw under the 3D menu will be here as well. And I could choose Mesh from Preset, and then select, in this case, a sphere, and then click Create. And once I click Create, you'll see my sphere is built. You'll see it maps exactly to the background image that it came from. When you build a 3D shape, it really consists of three things. A mesh, which has the underlying structure of the 3D model, the polygons that I described. There's always at least one mesh. It has materials. Materials control the appearance of the mesh, and they actually use texture maps. In this case, the appearance is the image we're using to create it. And they have lights. You'll see this little light widget up here where I can click and change the light source. And see how that affects the shadow in the background? Shadows are automatic, and they follow the objects now. But I'll click back on the 3D object, and I want to scale it down a bit. So I will move it on the Z axis. If I drag down, it's coming towards you. If I drag up, it's getting smaller on the Z plane, basically moving away from you. And sometimes I find I just do this several times until I land at my desired size. Now the green and the red will let you move on the Y axis, or rotate, or scale, and the same on the X, move, rotate, or scale. Each little notch or each little shape does something different. But I'm going to move it on the plane overall. So I've moved it up here, and you'll notice the shadow making it look like it's floating higher. And then I'll rotate it. I want to see a little bit of the Capitol building. And then I'll move up and rotate it in this direction. And a really fun thing to do is go to Layers and simply duplicate this layer. I'll name it Sphere 1 before I do that. And now I can drag this down to the New Layer icon or duplicate it just like I did earlier with a right click. I'll double click and name this Sphere 2, and now I'm going to move this on the scene. So I'll move it over to the left, and now I want to rotate it so that I can see a different portion. And you have to get a little bit of practice which rotation direction you want in order to get the object to actually move. So here, I've got the final rotate around the Y axis, and I'll aim for the top gray bounds and rotate it down a little bit. Just using your best judgment for the effect you're trying to create. I always imagine when I build this exercise that aliens are coming to say hello <laughs> to our nation's capital. There we go. And I'm not going to make it perfect. The goal is to see shapes that you can build. So let's take a look at a few of the other built-in shapes. If I click on this birdhouse, one of the first 3D features I saw was New 3D Postcard, and that's under 3D, New Mesh from Layer, and Postcard. 
a postcard can create the look of something casting in the background, like a brochure laying on a table, for example. So I can click and drag and put this in perspective. Now, since this is such a simple 3D model, the ground plane to me is distracting. So I could choose View, Show, and turn off the 3D ground plane. And now just pick it up and move it in 3D space. They even show me a little cube or rectangle that it's kind of trapped inside to indicate what it's doing as you drag this in different directions. You could even do this with placed video. It's amazing. The next shape I'll build is I'll come to this raindrop texture. And I'm already on the 3D workspace, so I could do 3D new mesh from layer and choose a cylinder from here. Or I can use a method I use first, choose cylinder and click create. And this makes basically a can or a tin. I could click on the object and I will scale. So I just have to get to the right icon on this 3D widget. There we go. Scale along the Y to make it a little bit short and stocky. And then come over here, scale along the X. And I'll do a little rotation so you could see the top to see that it is truly a cylinder. And as I move anything, they have shadows in the background. So with these three examples, you saw three different ways to use the 3D tools. Did I say three enough? In Photoshop to create some very interesting special effects. Give these a try on images of your own.